so uh, welcome to another lecture of control systems in this lecture we will be discussing about the block diagram and representation of the given system and also we will uh, understand the block diagram reduction techniques right so uh, generally a uh, given system can be represented by the differential equations right so we can represent a given system using differential equations right this is one way of representing fine uh, and uh, we can also represent a given system through transfer function now these two are the mathematical way of representing any given system however if the given system is uh, a complex system if we have a highly complex system so in highly complex system right so these two methods won't work it is not that it won't work but uh, for a complicated system or complex system uh, representing such system through differential equation would be you know a uh, hectic work okay fine it would be long equations fine large equations would be there similarly we would be having a transfer function of large order so in this case in such case it is very difficult almost uh, you know uh, undesirable to represent any highly complex system through uh, differential equations or through transfer function now in this case what we do is we have another kind of representation which we call as you know block diagram representation so we have something we call as block diagram representation so block diagram representation is the one in which transfer function is represented by a block okay so we may have uh, this kind of representation that we may have some input then this is gs then this is cs right so this is a block a block may represent one particular element in the given system like uh, a system can be a simple system it can be a complicated system so it may have many subsystems into it so every element every system or subsystem of main system will be having uh, you know uh, you know uh, a blocks basically right so an element of a system can be represented by block and a block will always be having an input and an output and hence it would be having a transfer function right so uh, this is how we can represent as you can see in this particular diagram this diagram represents a block diagram of any particular system in this we have certain elements as you can see so we can see that the basic elements of a block diagram are so we may have we can say that the basic element basic elements of block diagram right as you can see in this particular diagram here we have some blocks we have some points like this then we have this we have this here so what do we call these uh, you know you know elements so uh, there are you know three types of uh, or three types of elements of a block diagram a block itself block is the basic element of block diagram then we have summing point this is it is also the basic element of any block diagram then we have take off point so there are three basic elements of any block diagram representation a block a summing point and a take off point as you can see in the given diagram here in this particular diagram we have all these three now what is a summing point so summing point is uh, you know if let us expand this one and see here so now if okay so in this diagram if you see this particular you know this particular type of uh, uh, what do you say this particular type of element which you see here this is what we call as take off point this is known as 
take off point right these are blocks all these are blocks 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 right and this is okay so um this one and this one these two are summing points now what is a block what is a summing point what is a takeoff point that is next thing we need to understand okay so if we see uh, you know here so we can say that uh, a block simply represents the transfer function okay of uh, a particular element of the system and a summing point is something summing point so summing point is represented in this way okay a summing point is the one in which we have many signals are coming and being added right so many signals are entering you can see signals are entering and they are added and you'll get some output okay so a summing point will have one output and many inputs right so if we see such kind of representation or such kind of element in the block diagram it is actually summing point right take off point what is take off point so take off point is a point for example you have a block diagram and you have a signal being given to a block let us say g1s and we have some output here so if you tap this signal and give this signal to some other element let us say g2s and you get some another response let us say c2s so this point is take off point you can see that from here you have tapped rs and you have given this rs to this one g2s so c1s in this case will be rs g1s and c2s in this case will be rs g2s so we can say that a takeoff point is the one which from where we tap signal and we give that signal to some other element of the block diagram as you can see here in this particular diagram here in this diagram if you see we have all these summing points and takeoff points right now, if you see this one so you have r so r is been tapped and given to this g2 so this is take take off point so take off you can understand from its name itself take off okay so you take the signal off from that point and give it to the another element right now these are the this this was all about the basic elements of the given you know uh, block diagram representation of any system now if we have to uh, you know reduce or we have to find out the overall transfer function of the system so if i ask um, that we have to find out the overall transfer function of this particular system so how will we find out okay so we must be having certain instructions to determine the overall transfer function of this block diagram or there must be some rules okay so now yes there are certain rules in block diagram representation uh, which we use to reduce a given complicated transfer uh, block diagram representation of any system to a simple block or a single block so that it becomes easy for us to find out the overall transfer function of the given system right okay like in if we represent a given system through differential equations fine so how will we find out the transfer function of that system we will simply apply laplace transform on that equation rearrange that equation in terms of inputs and outputs we'll put all the initial conditions to zero and then we'll get the ratio of output laplace of output to the laplace of input and in this way we will get the overall transfer function of the given system however if we have the graphical representation we have the pictorial representation of any given system and like we have block diagram representation and if we have to find out the overall transfer function of um, this representation so for that we have certain rules right and those rules we will discuss now now the first rule is okay so now let us start with the rules the first rule is cascading of blocks what does it mean it means that if you have some blocks 
in cascade for example you have right for example there are two blocks with gain g1s and g2s and they are cascaded cascaded means in series that means if the blocks are connected in series okay so in this case uh, uh, cs is equal to ys g2s and ys is equal to rs g1s right now we'll substitute it here so cs is equal to you know rs g1s g2s right so cs upon rs so this is the overall transfer function right so this is equal to g1s into g2s right so that means if we have a, this kind of representation so this representation can be represented or replaced by a single block by simply multiplying the gain of all the blocks which are connected in series which are cascaded based. this is what we call as cascading of blocks now we have simply replaced two blocks with a single block and simply multiplied the gain of each block and this is the you know representation so this is how we can uh, simplify a block diagram if we see the blocks are cascaded to one another we can simply replace all those cascaded blocks with a single blocks and in the transfer function of that single block would be the product of all the transfer functions of each block which is cascaded right now this is one rule the second rule is blocks in parallel so if we have blocks in parallel right for example you have this kind of representation you have some takeoff points and you have some blocks let's say g1s g2s and let us say g3s right so and then you have a summing point plus 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 for example and you have some output cs right so now let us find out cs so cs is equal to now this rs now these are takeoff point this is takeoff point right so here also we'll be having rs here also we'll be having rs here also we'll be having rs so this rs in is been tapped and fed to g1 g2 g3 right simultaneously now cs is equal to g1s into rs plus g2s into rs plus g3s into rs right so we can take rs common cs is equal to g1s plus g2s plus g3s and you have rs here right so cs upon rs is equal to g1s plus g2s plus g3s what does it mean that if you have the blocks connected in parallel if blocks are connected in parallel right so what will we get we can replace all those blocks with a single block right so now this can be replaced as rs block cs cs is the output now g1s plus g2s plus g3s right so these that means if all the blocks are connected in parallel we can replace all those blocks with a single block and the transfer function of that block that single block would be sum of all the transfer function of each block which are in parallel to one another right so this is the second rule fine so in this way we can simplify the representation then we have the summing point right so shifting of summing point third rule is shifting of sorry so let us uh, okay so we'll solve it here okay now uh, third point third rule is shifting of summing point shifting of summing point for example there you have a summing point 
you have a summing point and there is a block right and you have two signals for example let us say r s and uh, plus and let us say plus minus there is one more signal xs and this is gs and this is output cs right so now cs what is cs cs is equal to here we have rs plus minus xs right so cs is equal to gs into rs plus minus xs right so it is equal to gs rs plus minus gs xs this is what it is right now if you have to shift this summing point from a position before the block to a position after the block right so let us shift it so now we have gs here and we have summing point here now and this would be cs and here and this is rs gs right now what changes we will make in the representation while shifting the summing point from a position before the block to a position after the block so what changes we should make in the existing representation of block diagram while shifting a summing point in this way okay so as you can see gs rs gs plus my gs hs there is plus and let us say it is plus minus here so what you will do is you will simply multiply gs here and this is xs so cs now in this case will be you can see this rs gs and this plus minus gs xs so you'll get the similar kind of mathematical representation what does it mean it means that when you are shifting the summing point from one position to another position in this way so you can shift but remember one thing the response should not change the response should remain same right it should not change you can see in this case both responses are same the responses are same here similarly if we have to shift the summing point okay for example if you have a summing point like this if you have a block here gs and rs and then we have a summing point and let us say plus and plus minus and we have cs and there is let us say xs so if you want to shift it here okay if you want to shift it here so let us find out cs first of all cs is equal to r s g s plus minus xs so this is what cs is now let us shift now when we shift the summing point you will get this kind of representation now plus and plus minus rs and now the block will go after summing point and then cs right now in this case cs is equal to gs this into this now what changes we should make here so that we will get the same response we should get this kind of response we will simply divide xs with gs the same block remember you have to divide access with the same transfer function of the block where around which you are shifting the summing point around which you are shifting the summing point right so it is access this now let us see what is cs cs is equal to rs plus minus access by gs into gs right so cs now is equal to r s g s plus minus sorry plus minus access by g s into g s it is cancelled so you have r s g s plus minus access c s right so same kind of response is there okay so while shifting a summing point after the block or before the block we can make changes in the existing representation but remember the response should not change 
changes must should be made in such a way the actual response of the system should not change right then the next rule is shifting of takeoff point now if you are shifting a takeoff point the same kind of uh, you know uh, concept is applicable to this also for example you have a takeoff point rs and you have a take point takeoff point here and this is let us say gs and the response here is cs and here we'll have rs because rs has been tapped and if you measure at this point you'll get rs only okay now what is uh, cs cs is equal to gsrs right cs is equal to gs uh, rs right so now what should we do uh, in when we shift the uh, you know uh, a takeoff point from a position before the block to a position after the block so what should we do in this case now this is the question okay now you can simply do this you can shift okay now let us see let us shift this we want to shift it here okay if we want to shift it here so let us draw this one so now if we want to shift it here so this block will go this side right so we have rs then a block gs then a takeoff point and then cs now remember at the end of this one we should have the same response rs now how will we get the same response rs now if we if we multiply this okay now what is the response here now let us find out the response here if you don't do anything the response here is rs gs which is not acceptable the response should be rs remember if you have shifted the takeoff point here the response at this point should be rs now what changes we should do we should simply uh, you know divide this point with gs and hence now you will get what is the response here rs gs divided by gs cancelled so it is rs and you'll get the same response okay so when you are shifting a takeoff point from a position before the block to a position after the same block so the branch that you are tapping or taking off will be having the uh, inverse of the transfer function of the block around which you are shifting takeoff point right now similarly if you are shifting a takeoff point let us say you have like this okay so we'll write it here uh, shifting takeoff point from a position after the block to a position before the same block right so let us try to solve this one so for example if we have an input right and we have a block gs right and there is a takeoff point here and this is cs and this is let us say uh, what do you say what do you call it okay so this is for example uh, some let us say uh, it is c1s and let us say it is c2s right c1s is equal to rs gs and c2s is also equal to rs gs so both are same for example this is equal to cs so this is also equal to cs both are same right now what you are doing is you are simply shifting it here right so you can do you can shift but remember what you will do is 
okay so what you will do is you will make changes in the existing representation in this way that the actual response of the system shall not change g s r s right so the response at this point c s it is equal to g s r s now the response at this point should also equal to g s r s right so how will you get you simply will multiply this with g s and here also you'll get r s g s that is equal to c s okay so when you have shifted a takeoff point from a position after the block to a position before the block the new branch that you will get will be multiplied with the exact transfer function of the block around which you have shifted that takeoff point right so these were the few rules we have many more rules here right so we will be discussing those rules in the uh, next uh, you know lecture okay so uh, this was the part 1 of uh, block diagram reduction technique in the part 2 we will be discussing rest of the rules and then we will be seeing some numerical problem how we can solve the block diagrams or reduce block diagrams to a single block by using the block diagram reduction technique right so now this is it for today's class and uh, guys thank you so much